I'm Jason Grubb, and I've competed in the CrossFit Open for 10 straight years. I've also competed at the CrossFit Games for five years, and I've won the last four times I've been there. And in this video, I'm going to demystify the CrossFit Open and help athletes of all levels, especially Masters athletes, prepare effectively. The CrossFit Open is a worldwide online fitness competition, and it's the first stage of the qualifiers. There's the CrossFit Open, then quarterfinals, then semifinals, then the CrossFit Games. It's essentially designed to be inclusive, allowing athletes of all levels to compete. You register for the CrossFit Games by going to games.crossfit.com. You pay a fee, you register, you throw your name in the hat, and now you're a CrossFit Open competitor. I've done this, like I said, for the last 10 years. And what's really cool about registering at the CrossFit Games website is that you develop this like history of the CrossFit Open workouts. So you have all of these statistics over time. Like the first year I did the CrossFit Open was 2014. Interestingly enough, in 2014, the fifth workout that year was actually repeated this last year as the first workout is 23.1. And for me, it was really fun to be able to go back and see what my score was six months into my CrossFit journey versus 10 years into my CrossFit journey. I did a little bit better this time, but it's fun to have that level of history all documented. It's also really fun at the end of the CrossFit Open because you can see how your performance compares to those around the world, those in your country, those in your state, those in your profession. Like you could do all these sorted categories and it's really cool. So it's definitely worth signing up. There are divisions and age categories. You've got the individual division, which is like 18-year-olds to 34-year-olds. You have master's athletes, which are 35 plus. So you have 35 to 39, 40 to 44, 45, 49, so on, all the way up. And then you also have teenage athletes between 14 and 17 years old. And you have adaptive athletes for those athletes with disabilities. Anyone can compete in the CrossFit Open. As far as equipment goes, if you go to a CrossFit gym to do the CrossFit Open, they should have all the equipment you would need to compete in any of the open workouts. There's not any really new or crazy elements that get thrown into the CrossFit Open, it's pretty standard. You're going to see equipment like a barbell or dumbbells, plyo boxes for box jumps or box step ups, you might see a wall ball or medicine ball in there. We often see a rower or a jump rope, a pull up bar, rings, extra floor space. Essentially, if you go to a CrossFit gym, you're going to have everything you need. You could take a look at the historical workouts that have been released during the CrossFit Open, and you'll be able to see what's pretty typical. But it's, it's nothing really crazy. It's mostly standard CrossFit gear. The workouts themselves, so they're announced every Thursday for three weeks in a row. They have a specific time that they release the workouts worldwide via a live broadcast. Typically, it's on YouTube or at the CrossFit Games website, and you get to see a live competition with real athletes doing the workout right after the announcement. Typically, these are elite athletes. It'd be really cool one year if they have something like an individual athlete from 18 to 34 years old, maybe a master's athlete, a teen athlete and an adaptive athlete all competing together at the same time. Like that would be super cool. That's just something I hope for in the future. It's a fun announcement and you get to see the workout done right then and there with athletes that don't have any previous knowledge or awareness of what the workout will be. They're just as surprised as you and I will be when the workouts are announced. You have from the moment the workout is released until Monday afternoon at a specific time in your time zone to submit your score to the CrossFit Games website. If you do this at an affiliate, typically the affiliate can validate your score. You can also submit your score with a video for video review. And if you're one of the top athletes in the world and you might actually win this workout, you're gonna wanna make sure you have video evidence of that particular workout because there is a cash prize for those that win each open workout. You can redo a workout and submit a new score as many times as you would like between that Thursday and that Monday. Like I am now a one and done kind of guy. Like I don't need to redo these, but as early as two years ago, I redid one or two of the workouts because they were fun and I just didn't like how I performed on the first attempt at it. So it's totally cool to redo them. In a perfect world, you're just kind of one and done. The most I've ever repeated a workout in a CrossFit Open is three times. I did it on a Friday night and then I retested it on Monday and there was like a technical glitch on the CrossFit Games website that allowed you to submit scores on Tuesday. So I redid it on Tuesday and I actually improved my score, but it was the worst workout to have ever chosen to do three times. So I don't recommend that, but you certainly can if you want to.
And hey, if you can't perform a movement or a skill that is part of a CrossFit open workout, there is a scaled version of every workout that's released. So whether you do the workout RX as it's described, or you do the scaled version of the workout, you can still submit scores for an RX or scaled or modified workout as long as you meet the movement standards of the RX or workout as prescribed or the scaled workout. And a lot of times what CrossFit will do is they'll release a workout where it's very inclusive. Everybody can do this workout until a certain point where maybe ring muscle-ups show up in the workout or bar muscle-ups or some sort of high skill movement. So they'll often save those for the end of the workout so that most people can get really, really deep in the workout and only the best athletes actually get far enough to start doing that high skill movement. That happens quite a bit. Every once in a while, CrossFit will throw a wrench in it and start with ring muscle-ups on the second workout of the CrossFit Open. That has happened before. But what we've seen over the past few years is CrossFit is trending towards making the Open this three-week, very inclusive event. Uh, but even within that, but we never know until we actually see the workouts. So what happens after the Open is done? Your scores are complete, you see your final score, and you can see how you compare to the rest of the world. And for those that are in the top 25% of the scores in every division, they get to move on to the next competition, which is quarterfinals, which is about a month later. Quarterfinals is like the CrossFit Open condensed into one weekend. Instead of three weeks long, it's one weekend long, and there might be five to six individual events in quarterfinals. And then a certain amount from quarterfinals move on to semifinals and then to the games from there. I'm not going to get into all of that. I'll do videos about that later. The type of workouts we generally see in the open are often simple and it's in their simplicity that they're really, really challenging. A lot of them are couplets with just two movements. You might do that for a certain amount of time or you might have to do a ladder of those particular movements. It's the simplicity of the workouts that's magical. Also, I underestimate the heck out of these workouts almost every year. Now, like in my 10th year, like I know, regardless of what it looks like on paper, it's gonna hurt. And we all get to hurt together. It's another fun thing about the Open is suffering with others. Community is a big part of the Open. And if you get a chance to do these CrossFit Open workouts with others, like at a Friday Night Lights at your gym, or maybe even just with your training partners, it makes it incredibly fun. The first year I did the Open, I did it at my first CrossFit gym that I went to. And I did it with everybody that was in my class. And it was so much fun. I was immediately hooked on this whole CrossFit Open, CrossFit competition thing. The second year, I had just opened my own CrossFit gym. And it was me and my next door neighbor. We did the CrossFit Open together. And it was a blast. If you could do it with somebody, do it with somebody or many people. So how do you prepare for the Open? Well, here's the reality. At this point, from a training perspective, when I release this video, you should be as prepared as you can be for the CrossFit Open. Like there's no secret formula in the last week to get really, really fit. A lot of gyms leading up to the CrossFit Open will start to bias their programming just a bit to prepare people for the CrossFit Open. Boulder Athlete, we've also done that over the past few weeks. We've started to really lean into the movements that we often see in the CrossFit Open. So that we're really well practiced at these movements and we're very, very fit and ready for them. You wanna make sure that your endurance is super high, your pain tolerance is high, your strength is solid, and your technique is dialed in. Beyond that, you know, you're good to go. But whether you've trained specifically for the CrossFit Open or not, it's totally fine. You're gonna be okay. We all get to work out together and just suffer together in these challenging workouts. Now, the thing you can do at this point is you can start with your mental preparation. This involves setting realistic goals. You know, year one, I didn't think to myself, oh, I'm going to crush the CrossFit Open and maybe make it to the games and win the games. It was never my thought or intention the first year I did it. I was just trying to get my feet wet and understand what this whole thing was about. But I also had a ton of fun and I sold my soul on those workouts because that's what everyone was doing. And so I was all in on it. Year two, my expectations were also in check. You know, I've only got two years into CrossFit and I want to see how well I can do in the open. That's about it. Now, as I've progressed through the years, I have higher and higher expectations for myself in the CrossFit Open. But really, from a mental preparation standpoint, set realistic goals for yourself. Like if you can't do a muscle up yet, you've never done one in your life, there may be an opportunity to do this in the CrossFit Open, but it's okay if you don't. Just set for yourself some realistic expectations and some realistic goals like enjoy, get great workouts in, and remain uninjured through the three week process. Now, if you're like me, when we start to get close to the open or close to bigger competitions, you might feel that performance anxiety, kind of those RPMs start to rev up earlier in the week on an open announcement week. That's something that I experience, but it is something to just kind of enjoy. You know, one of the fun parts about like 
having a vacation is actually planning the vacation. The anticipation of the vacation is just as fun as the actual vacation itself. I think the same thing about competition like the Open. I get really excited the week of the Open. I'm so excited for Thursday. I can't believe it's here every year on that Thursday. I'm like, ah, oh, we're here and it's really exciting. And when that anxiety starts to really get high, just step back, take a couple of deep breaths. And remember that the Open is just the Open. And it's a fun test of my fitness that I get to do once a year. And that's it. It doesn't have to be the largest performance of my life. I'll save that for me at the CrossFit Games. The anxiety can be there. And there's some ways to mitigate this that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Like what do we do once we hear the open announcement and we start to strategize and prep? So I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. So when it comes to nutrition around the CrossFit Open or really any competition, my strategy is just to do the things that I always do. So I'm not the kind of guy to fall off the wagon for part of the year and then get back on the wagon or whatever the phrase would be for part of the year. I try to be fairly consistent throughout the entire year. I eat fairly clean. I eat almost the same thing every day because I want my body to be well-fueled and well-prepared for training days, for recovery days, for days when I'm out building things in my yard and for days when I'm competing. And as long as I fuel myself relatively the same way every day, I know what I can demand out of my body. So that's how I recommend preparing for the open. Develop habits that are just consistent every day and then execute those same habits on a competition day like the open. So for me, the night before the open, I'm going to try to get a good night's sleep like I try to do every night. I'm going to use Thirdsy. This is a recovery collagen that I take every night before bed. I wouldn't take this the night before the open if I hadn't been taking it every night. But since I do, this is part of my routine. I'm going to wake up in the morning, the morning of the open or the morning of the competition, and I'll make myself a cup of coffee. My favorite coffee is Colonel's Coffee. It's what I have every day. It's nothing new, but I'm going to make myself a fresh cup of coffee and enjoy the heck out of it. On my way to the gym, I'm going to drink my pre-workout. My pre-workout has beta alanine in it. I use Black Label. You can take beta alanine whenever you want, but my habit is to take it prior to arriving to the gym for training. Creatine, standard, and whey protein. This is what I do every day, day in and day out, so that I know what I can demand of my body on a competition day, just like I do on a training day or any other day. Consistency is the key here. Nothing new. Like if someone gives you some brand new like pre-workout drink just before the CrossFit Open, that sounds like a terrible idea. Don't try new things during the Open. Try new things when like the stakes are low and you're just in training. And you can find out like, does this drink help me? Great. Does eating a bunch of gummy worms in my training, does that help? Maybe. But don't introduce something crazy and new on competition day. Make sure you hydrate, by the way, just like you would any other day. Hydration is more than just drinking water. You're going to add salt, potassium, magnesium, electrolytes that you need to stay hydrated. Water alone doesn't do it. But if you're drinking water plus electrolytes, of course, I like Element, but you can use any kind of electrolytes to get that done. You're going to be well hydrated, just like you should be every day. So when it comes to strategy around the CrossFit Open workouts, there's a couple of things that I'm going to give you that'll be helpful. First, watch the Open announcement. It's super fun to watch the announcement to get the reveal of the Open workout, but then you'll also see individual athletes do the workout immediately. You'll at least get to see some human beings who don't know the workout prior do this workout. Now, the benefit to that is you get to see like what this looks like, how the flow, what the rhythm looks looks like all of that. On the flip side, you get to see some of the fittest human beings on the planet do this workout. So when I look at like Brett Fikowski and Pat Vellner do a workout together, that's really cool, but I'm 48 years old and I won't perform at their level. But it is fun to watch them to kind of see what that looks like. But then I've got to like come at it from my own angle, my own version. Like what's the way that I'm going to do this? I'm not 20, I'm not 25, I'm 48. So what does that look like for me? That's where I start to step into thinking through the overall volume of the workout. Like how many pull-ups is this really? Oh, it's like 90 pull-ups. Okay, that's kind of a lot. You know, how many thrusters is in this workout? Oh, it's also 90 thrusters. Okay, at 100 pounds, that's a lot of thrusters. If I was just to do that many thrusters or that many pull-ups, like what would be the fatigue level in my body? But then when you combine it together, gosh, it's really a big push-pull. So I'm going to work through all of those details in my head to realize like what the actual volume is in this workout and then start to strategize appropriately. So once I know that volume, I have an idea of the different areas of fatigue I'm going to feel in my body. Then I start to think about how do I want to pace this workout? Regardless of the workout, whether it's like four minutes or nine minutes or 18 minutes, CrossFit shares workouts of all different lengths. But almost all the workouts require some sort of thought around pacing the beginning so that you don't run into a brick wall somewhere along the way in that workout. No one ever wins, rarely wins the CrossFit Open workout by winning round one or by sprinting off the line. It's normally something a bit more methodical. 
Like I often will break up sets more often early in the workout so that I have plenty of energy, plenty in reserve for the end of the workout when it gets really, really, really tough. So that's often something to think about. So another thing that I really like to do once I know what the workout is, and I've seen an example of the workout done by some of the fittest people on the planet, I start to visualize the workout in my head at my own pace. And this is a really fun and easy way to work your way through a workout without actually doing the physical reps. You can mentally practice the workout in your head. I've done this for all of my competitions. I've practiced the workouts in competition multiple times in my head, literally thinking, okay, where am I going to be standing at three, two, one, go. Then what happens? I go to the barbell. Okay, then what happens? Okay, I go to get some chalk before I get up on the pull-up bar. Then what happens? I do the reps there, then I stop. Then how many breaths do I take? I take three breaths. Then I move on to the barbell again. I do the barbell work. And then when do I get chalk? Where is the chalk? Where are the lines? How do I navigate from one thing to the next? I work through all of that in my head so that when it comes up to game day, I'm just kind of on autopilot. I'm just focused on making sure I don't deviate from the plan. Or I could be thinking about the plan and if I feel really good, I could speed up. But I've already done the reps in my head so I kind of know what's next, what this should feel like and what the flow is. It's a really, really effective way, again, to get your brain wrapped around this workout without actually putting in the physical reps. And then of course, guys, when the workout is announced, I'll release a strategy video on how I'm gonna approach the workout and how I recommend most people approach these workouts. It's just something I love to do. So expect that after after the open announcements every step of the way. You're going to want to bring some gear to the gym for the CrossFit Open workouts. Like the gym is going to have most of the equipment you need, but there's some things that are customized and personal to you that's going to make you more effective at these workouts. Obviously, first is grips. So Bring a pair of grips that you absolutely love, not brand new grips you've never used before. You want to have a couple of weeks on these grips so they're nice and worn in. Grips are going to help you hang onto the bar longer on pull-ups, toes to bar, bar muscle-ups, ring muscle-ups. Really, really important to let the grips do the work so that the limiting factor on those high rep movements that we generally see in the open, the limiting factor is not your grip or your forearms. The limiting factor is actually your body fatigue. The grips do all the work to keep you attached to the rings or attached to that bar. And a good pair of grips will do that. You'll also want some support here, like a lifting belt or knee sleeves or wrist wraps. These can all help you with support areas. For me, if it's heavy, I'm gonna wear a lifting belt. If I'm doing walking lunges, I'm wearing knee sleeves. If I'm doing a ton of slightly heavier thrusters, I may wear wrist wraps to provide a little support to my wrists on that amount of thrusters. I'm gonna to wanna to bring my own jump rope. Now, CrossFit gyms have jump ropes and maybe you don't even have a jump rope, but you gotta get one. Like there's nothing like having your own rope that you practice with. You, you know exactly what it feels like because you've done hundreds and hundreds of reps with your rope. It's size to you. It fits your hands. It fits your height. You just get it and you know it. There's nothing worse literally than like having to use a rope that's not yours. It's a new weight. It feels different. And you're going to experiment with that during the open. No, get a rope. It's not that much to just do that. Grips, weightlifting belt, knee sleeves, wrist wraps, jump rope, get geared up so that you just don't have to worry about this in the future. You're also going to want to have a pair of lifters. Unless you have like gumby ankles, okay, so super rubbery ankles, which some people do and that's awesome. Most of us can use a pair of lifter weightlifting shoes. So they have a little bit thicker heel and what they're going to do is they're going to put you in a slightly better position for squats and they're worth every penny. I get my lifters from Box Basics. A good lifter has a nice heel, super solid. It's going to improve your squat. It's also going to improve your Olympic lifting. So I'm definitely going to have my lifters with me for the open in case we do something that requires them. With all that said, take the open as an opportunity to challenge yourself, to push yourself harder in a workout than maybe you ever have. We don't get opportunities to do this that much in life. Like we work hard in training and we work hard when we work out in the gym, like that's all fun. But when you have something like the open come around, it's time to set yourself on fire with pacing and strategy, but really push yourself as hard as you can. It's only three workouts over three weeks. And I've never, ever finished a CrossFit Open workout and wished that I didn't go that hard. It's never occurred in my head. If you have any specific questions or comments, leave it in the comments below. I love to respond to comments. I'll answer any questions that you have. And if you're looking for a training program that's made specifically for masters by a master's athlete myself, it's the exact training plan that I follow. Head over to boulderathlete.com check it out. Come join us. You get a week for free just to try it out. And I'll be supporting all of our Boulder athletes significantly through the entire 
qualification season, obviously. And if you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Do me a favor, click that like button. Let YouTube know that you dig content like this so I can reach more athletes out there and share all the things I've learned. Follow my journey through the qualifiers here on the YouTube channel or on Instagram, Jason Grubb underscore fitness. And just remember, guys, your best days are ahead of you. Get bolder, not older. See you in the open.